Hi friends! Hello! Welcome to my sing-along. Thanks for joining me today. Today's sing-along is called The Slug. We'll learn more about the slug later. How about we sing? Bye birdies! Walk with me, come friends to the tree. There's so much to learn, so much to see. Come friends to the tree. Will you sing with me? with me. Come, friends, to the trees. There's so much to learn, so much to see. Come, friends, to the trees. Let's do it one more time. But we're going to change keys and sing a little higher. You ready? Come, come friends, walk with me. To the trees, there's so much to learn, so much to see. Come, friends, to the trees, yeah, to the trees, oh yeah, to the trees. Come, friends, walk with me. singing I could hear you <laughs> well 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 what are we gonna learn about today <laughs> well get your nature journals get your nature journals that we've been working on we get to learn about a nature friend every day right yesterday we learned about our nature friend the daffodil I drew my daffodils there. Do you see my daffodil that I put a little X through? Do you remember why? Because yesterday I was telling you that I was studying the daffodil. And before I looked closely enough, I made a daffodil with 10 petals. But as I studied it more, I realized that daffodils have only six petals. So I tried again to do a daffodil, and I did. And just as with all of our nature friends, there are many kinds of daffodils. He was telling you about the all yellow daffodil. And then yesterday I made a silly mistake. He said this one has white petals, and yesterday I said it had an orange center. <laughs> that's not orange, that's not orange, that's yellow. This one does have an orange center, doesn't it? Miss Morgan gets yellow and orange mixed up for some reason all of the time. I have to think really hard before I say the color name because I get them backwards. <laughs> well, let's learn about today's nature friend, the slug. <laughs> There's my slug. I have two slugs on my page because as I said, like lots of nature friends, there are lots of different slugs, not just one kind. And the top one is called the leopard slug. The bottom one is called the gray garden slug. See, they're a little different. The top one has little spots like leopards. I guess that's why it's called the leopard slug. So what did I learn today when I researched the slug? Well, as I set out to research, I asked myself these questions. What do they look like? Where does the slug live? What do they need to survive? Why is the slug important? Those were some of the questions I asked myself. And then I looked for the answers. 
And this is what I found. What do they look like? Well, I already showed you two. Here's the leopard slug, has little spots. What does he have on his head? Tentacles. Can you say that? Tentacles. Guess where his eyeballs are? On the top of his tentacles. Isn't that cute? <laughs> this slug, the one that's called the gray garden slug, doesn't have spots. Did you notice? This leopard slug can be as long as, you ready? Eight inches. Wow, that's about that long. <laughs> and I guess that is the largest slug that you can find in Ohio, where I live. This gray garden slug is just about an inch. So it's a little different in size, isn't it? See how even the slugs can be different? Yeah. Well, what else did I learn? Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you something else about the slug. You may know because you may have already seen a slug before. They're very slimy. Slugs are very slimy. <laughs> Let's see, where does the slug live? Slugs live under logs, under rocks, under dread, dead tree bark, because they like it to be moist or wet. So that's where you'll find a slug. You might even find a slug if you have a deck at your house and you have a plant on that deck, you might even lift the plant and the slug might be in there. <laughs> Let's see what else. What do they need to survive? Well, slugs need moisture, they need wetness. They like to eat leaves, mushrooms. And I learned that some slugs eat other slugs. Wow, that was kind of interesting. I ask myself, why is a slug important? And this is what I found out. Slugs are the food for other animals. That's one reason why they're so important. Do you know who eats slugs? What other nature friends? Some birds eat slugs. Toads eat slugs. I didn't know that. Frogs. Hedgehogs. They like slugs. And remember we talked about the opossum? The opossum likes slugs. And the raccoon. The raccoon likes slugs too. So the slug is food for a lot of nature friends. That makes a slug important, doesn't it? But there's another reason why the slug's important. I found out that the slug is something called a decomposer. Can you say that? A decomposer. That's kind of a big word, isn't it? A decomposer eats the dead stuff on the forest floor like leaves, like mushrooms. And the slug makes it special, makes it have, makes the, um, after, after the slug eats that, that becomes soil. And it makes the soil have like vitamins. You can think of it that way. It makes the forest floor, the soil, really healthy. Isn't that neat? And healthy soil makes healthy trees, which we need, and all nature creatures need, don't they? All living nature creatures. Healthy soil, we need healthy soil to grow our food, don't we? So the slug is very important, isn't it? <laughs> I also learned that there's a phrase that uses the word slug. Have you ever heard the word or the phrase, I feel like a slug? Have you ever heard anyone say that? I feel like a slug today. Do you know what that means? That kind of is another way of saying, mm, I feel a little lazy today. I feel like a slug. But you know what I thought when I, heard, when I read that? 
Slugs aren't lazy, are they? Slugs are doing all sorts of things on the forest floor for us. They're busy, 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 keeping watch and taking care of the soil, of the earth. <laughs> so they are very special. Well, that's some of what I learned about the slug. I wonder if you might go outside today with your nature journal and see if you can find any slugs. Maybe turn over some logs. Maybe turn over some rocks and see if you can find a slug. We'll probably find this one, the small one, that's just like this. I've never seen a leopard slug. I usually see these. So search for your slugs. Learn, maybe you can ask some other questions that you're wondering. And you can talk about the slug at breakfast with your loved ones. <laughs> Guess what else I have to share? I have a poem about the slug. Do you know what a poem is? A poem is like, well, it's like a little story, a short little story, and sometimes it rhymes. Do you want to hear my poem? I did not write this poem, and I could not find out, I could not find the name of the person that wrote this poem. So if anybody knows, please write me a note, and I'll add that to this video when I uh, post it, okay? This is called Slugs Slither Slowly. That's a lot of S's. Slugs slither slowly. Slugs slither slowly. Under garden gates, through cracks in garden walls, through each and any space. Silently and after dark, when you're tucked up, sleeping tight, they wriggle in and set their mark, waiting long into the night. And as you snooze away the hours, they fill their bellies with your flowers, sneaking away as morning comes, betrayed only by their sticky tums. <laughs> That's the slug. Remember we talked about how the slug likes daffodils? <laughs> now, if you have a garden, you might find slugs in the garden because they like the leaves of what you might be planting. Now, I might suggest to put on some gloves and pick those slugs off the leaves and put them under a rock. Maybe you could do that for fun and you could study the slug. Just put on some gloves, pick them off the leaf and put them under a rock where it's moist. All righty. Well, what else? Let's see. Hmm. I think. I think let's do another song, shall we? You know, the song we start with is a song that I wrote with some special friends at my school. My friends were four and five when they helped me write this. Now they're probably sophomores in high school. But the part we start with, with at the beginning of our sing-along is the chorus. And I thought I'd sing the rest of the song now. This is called, Come With Me to the Trees. Come with me to the trees. You can sing and dance and jump in all the leaves. Make music with the sticks and rocks. Climb up to the tippy top of a nearby hill. Then we can roll back down while they're still on the ground. Listen to all of nature's pretty sounds. There's so much beauty to see. Won't you come with me to the trees? Yeah, here's the part you'll recognize. Come, friends, walk with me. Come, friends, to the trees. There's so much to learn, so much to see. Come, friends, to the trees. All you need are your two feet, your imagination. You can do just what you want to do and be what you want to be. 
I want to be a bird. I want to be the wind. Let's sail this mob like pirates on the sea. Come, friends, walk with me. Come, friends, to the tree. There's so much to learn and there is so much to see. Come, friends, to the trees, to the trees, to the trees. Come, friends, walk with me. I could hear you singing. Yes, I could. <laughs> Well, I think I'll keep this because we're going to sing another song in a second. Well, tomorrow, I thought that we would go to a different place to learn about a nature friend from a place far away. So here is my globe of the world. Should we pick a spot to learn about? Because, you know, nature friends that we have here where I am in Ohio, well, those nature friends might not be everywhere. And some of the nature friends that are far away in a different place, they might live there, but not in Ohio. So I thought that we would go to a different place in the world and learn about a nature friend. Ooh, here's a spot. What's that called? Hmm, Argentina. Should we go to Argentina tomorrow? Huh. We're up here in the world. Where is it? We're up here. We're up here. Argentina's. We're going to go all the way down here. And we'll learn about a nature friend that may live in Argentina, but not here in Ohio. So that's tomorrow. Well, friends, until then, remember... Get work on your nature journal today. Maybe you can go outside and learn about the slug. Maybe you can get on the internet and learn about the slug and a loved one can help you. Try to get outside a lot today. We're spending a lot of time in our homes lately, aren't we? It's important to get out in your yard, if you have one, lots and lots, to watch what's going on out there, to smell the fresh air. And if you don't have a yard, well, Maybe you can find some pictures of nature because that helps. That helps us. That helps us humans to look at pictures of nature. And then remember, I always like to say that all of our nature friends, each and every one, is important and has a purpose. And I wanted to talk just for a second about that before I sing our final song. And I got this to kind of talk about it. Every nature friend is important. Do you know what this is? This is called a coaster. And a coaster sits on a table before you put a cup down. Sometimes people use coasters to protect their tables from any water or moisture that might be on the cup. Or maybe this cup might be hot full of something and it protects the table. That's a, called a coaster. And I thought when I looked at this coaster, I thought of the nature world. And I thought each thread in this coaster is kind of like a nature friend. All of these threads are needed to make this coaster work. Because if I put the coaster down and I put the cup on there and there a thread or two or three or four or five were missing, well then the water would just get right through to the table, wouldn't it? That coaster wouldn't work very well. And when I looked at the coaster, I thought, well, that's exactly like the nature world we're talking about. Every thread is like a nature friend. And every nature friend has its purpose in making our nature world work. You're a nature friend, and I'm a nature friend too, because we're all part of nature. So. Well, and you know I always like to say, 
before I sing my song that I wrote called Nature Needs Kids and Kids Need Nature, remember that nature needs you and you need nature. Will you help me sing? Maybe get up and dance. Find a spot. Find a spot. Find your own space. You ready? Nature needs kids and kids need nature from the tallest oak tree to the smallest creature. Nature needs kids, kids need nature. Become the great student of this great teacher. Oh, open your eyes, open your ears. Sit down in the middle of the forest here. Listen to the wind, the birds and the trees. They've got a great tale to tell you and me. Oh, here we go. Nature needs kids, kids need nature. From the tallest oak tree to the smallest creature. Nature needs kids, kids need nature. They're counting on us to be their protectors. So turn off the tube, turn off the games. We'll walk outside and make a difference today. Plant a new tree. Clean up a stream, make the fishies home nice and clean. That's right. From the great bear to the whales of the sea, the songbirds and the bumblebees, the tigers of the east, the rainforest too. You need them and they, they need, need who? You. Creature. Nature needs kids, kids need nature. Become the great student, become the great student, become the great student of this great teacher. Tara's doing the shaker. Woo! I saw you dancing, I heard you singing. Good job. All right, friends. Well, that's all for today. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place, 2 o'clock. See you then. Be well.